The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Kingdom Connection. I'm delighted to be at the Dream Center, specifically in a house, a piece of property that is on the property of the Dream Center in Los Angeles, California. The Dream Center is one of the greatest outreach ministries in the world. They're touching thousands upon thousands of people daily. And I am so thrilled to have the founder and a young man <laughs> who is uh, remarkable in a lot of people's eyes, including mine. We love and appreciate you, thank Matthew you. Barnett. Oh, thank what an you. honor to have you, man. It's an honor to be with you, thank and, you. And we're sitting in an unusual place right now in a, in a home that, that has been purchased for a specific purpose in ministry that God put a dream in your heart for. Um, tell us about this place. Tell us about the room where we're sitting in. Well, Pastor Jens is very special. This is one of our only beautiful houses on the Dream Center campus. Everything else is hospital floors and buildings and right. this big 400,000 square foot campus. Uh, 750 people live here every day. It's because of people like yourself and the viewers who have literally sponsored pretty much this entire facility to help people in drug and alcohol rehab, 250 people, emancipated minors who get sentenced to us by the courts when they're teenage kids who have nowhere to go. And now today, our only house on this campus, and it is beautiful. It's a three-story building dedicated to a need that came to my attention every week when I was traveling on the road. Three straight weeks in a row, I knew God was trying to tell me something. Yeah. Maybe he needed to tell me three times in a row because I'm slower, but I would go to the book now, table. Now, when was this? Was it recently? or? Yeah, I was speaking at churches, and at the end of speaking at a church, I went to the book table just to sign books and talk to people, and women would come up to me and say, Pastor, thank you for what you're doing for the homeless veteran men right. that you're helping at the Dream Center and housing them and getting them off the street and providing job training, but would you please help the women? And I said, okay. I just I felt like it was kind of a touch of God upon my heart. And then the very next week, I traveled somewhere else. Same thing happened three weeks in a row. Wow. I had women weeping that were veterans who had nowhere to go, that were basically homeless, that were struggling to provide for their children. And that's such a, and I that's knew God such a group something. that you hear, you hear nothing about, you know, and you, when you think of the military for whatever reason, and we hear a lot about uh, the post disorder stress of, of war and veterans coming home, many of them ending up homeless, Mi wow. millions, uh, you know, just are, are many committing suicide. Yeah. Uh, but we forget that there are, there are female soldiers also in that group, and they're in desperate need of love and attention and care. Two million female veterans that are homeless. I mean, I mean, two million female veterans in total, but they're four times more likely to be homeless than any other demographic. Wow. Uh, Twenty-four percent of them have um, encountered sexual abuse of some type. Just there's so much hurt and wound, and of course the post-traumatic stress syndrome, lower-paying jobs, coming home, bigger families. It's the perfect storm for really a horrible situation. And when we run our buses to Skid Row, which is the homeless capital of America, and we bring the buses in, we ask them, "How many of you have been veterans?" And ladies are just raising their hands in the bus left and right who are living on the street, who have served our country, mm. living in cardboard boxes in Skid Row, living down the street under the bridges here in levels I've never seen. And I begin and so to realize you, you saw this need coming. I, I, I remember you mentioning this to me yeah. almost a year ago. He saw, uh, because he's, I guess, in the trenches, so to speak, and he sees addiction and he sees homelessness every day. You, yeah. It's not a statistic to you, it's a face, it's a, it's a person. And, yes. and on this grounds, thousands of people. But I think the, the, the thing that, that touches me about it is when you understand that there, you said that you already had two women. We were talking earlier, you had two women who came to you who were veterans. And the fact that they're veterans, that they serve the United States of America, they fought for our freedom. They, they have served this nation with dignity and honor. And now to know that they're under bridges or living out on Skid Row with nothing, and we can make a difference. And uh, how, did, how did that burden begin to become a reality once you begin to see God move in your heart? These women veterans approach us different. They literally come to us and say, do you have a job I can do to have housing? Is there something I can do? They don't approach us in the usual way mm. as if, do you have a free place for me to stay? They want to work. Yeah, they want to mm -hmm. do something. They want to be a part of a mission or something. 
And, but there's just no safety net for these ladies. And they were coming up to the Dream Center and said, would you house us? And we said, yes, but we don't have a program. We need one, but we'll take in a couple of you. And just like the Emancipated Miners Home, we just kind of responded to a need. We wanted to do something. We had no ability to do it. And then the phone call again came from you. It's almost like you have a radar of need <laughs> to the Dream Center saying, is there anything in your heart? We're like, yes. We've taken in these homeless women that are veterans who have nowhere to go. We have a team in place, we have a program in place, but we have no resources to happen. And then we took them in, and now all of a sudden we're kind of living in a dream of this house that we've always wanted to do something great in on this campus, and now we're on the doorstep so, of doing this. And so this house will be able to house uh, because you guys, if, if, you, if there's one thing you can say about the Dream Center, <laughs> it's efficient. It is. You, efficiency is a big word around here. They waste nothing. They're like that story of Jesus where he multiplied the fish and the bread. And then he <laughs> said, now gather the fragments because we're going to use the 12 bags yeah. left over. You yeah. guys are so good at that. You don't waste. You do what you say. And um, 18, you think 18 women will That's be correct. in this program in this home. That's correct. That it's is so beautiful to me. This is a three-story building, and the, a great thing about the Dream Center is there's so many other programs, too. So if somebody comes through here for four or five months, they're doing well, but they have a drug addiction they've been facing or something they keep going back to, we'll just send them right over to the program that you guys have sponsored wow. in the recovery program. If there's a family that needs even longer-term housing, we can do that. So not only are the people that are living here, they're able, the ability to just get them into the entire campus life of GED programs, job training so programs. Good. We have an entire counseling center that will deal with the root issues, the post-traumatic uh, syndrome the and stress. The addictions, you know how to do All it. All of that's here. And yeah. so you talk about multiplying what you're able to do. Everything's already in place. Education's in place. The medical's in place. And what we just really need to do is to get this place completely up and running. And we want to deal with the shelter aspect of women who are living on the street. And then, of course, the long-term aspect of people who want to change. You know, one of the greatest joys that I have on Sunday night when I'm out here in California preaching at our church in Orange County, Free Chapel in Orange County, is you send down two bus loads of, um, and my understanding is they have to earn the right to, yeah. get, to get on that bus. They, they have to really... Uh, do something special, but you know, maybe as someone in the addiction program, or as someone, uh, some sometimes it's a busload of the girls that you guys have saved out of sex trafficking. And man, when when they pull up into our parking lot on Sunday evenings, and I see them out. Uh, this past Sunday night, I was there and I preached. And Matthew, I gave the altar call, and it was just so moving to me. I, 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 I had tears in my eyes because you see lives right before your eyes being transformed. If we can get them on this property, I know what's going to happen. I know the kind of ministry that's going to happen. Hearts are going to be, broken hearts are going to be healed, and dreams are going to be restored. And how do, you, how do you see God using this house? Tell us, you know... When these women come in, they're homeless. Again, they're veterans. Folks, they're veterans. Yeah. People who have stood for America, defended America. But I love the phrase you just said, they've fallen through the safety net. Yeah. And somebody's got to reach them. Somebody's got to care. Somebody's got to love them back to, to purpose and destiny yeah. in their life. How do you see that happening in this place? I think that's the strongest thing that we provide. I mean, the fact that these people get to go on a bus and hear you preach and they get to be around the word. And I think the thing about this place is we give people the luxury of time yeah. and it's time good. to change, time to grow, to work through issues of their life. And I, I see that being you a big value. You put food on the resource. table and clothes on them and feed them. Oh, and, and it's a twenty-four-seven operation. We're there. We'll walk through their college for them. Whatever it needs to be. That's what the call of God does. So good. And I think that's going to be the joy, the luxury of time, and of course the fact that they're hearing the word of God preached every single day. The Bible says, "Where there's no revelation, people cast off restraint." Mm. A lot of these people coming in, they feel like their mission is over. They serve their country. They paid their time. They've done their dues. But when they come here, we're going to tell them, no, your mission continues. You just got a brand new one. You have the call of God upon your life. Wow. And that's something that nobody else. Your mission continues. Nobody else can provide. The gospel resets our mission as well as heal our hearts. I have an article back home that I kept that any preacher would preach this, <laughs> this line and this headline. 
Let me tell you about it. There was this true story. There was this woman who had reached the end of her road and she goes to a bridge in Mississippi. She jumps off of the bridge with the full intent to take her own life. True story. There is a man under the bridge late at night fishing. He hears the splash and sees in the darkness, he still sees that somebody has jumped into the water. He dives into the water to save her, gets sort of out there, and when he does, it dawns on him he cannot swim. He starts drowning and crying and screaming for help, and the woman who's trying to take her life swims over, mm. rescues him, pulls him out, and the headline of the newspaper article is Woman Rescued by a Mission. See, if you can restore a dream, you can save a life. And I love the fact that they'll come here and they'll begin, you'll use, you'll teach them to serve others. Oh, yeah. You'll teach them to feed and help others, and that will begin to restore their life, right? I'm sure you see that all the time. You know, every day, as part of the program, what they're going to do is what the men do is they take these hot dog carts and they go like a stadium hot dog carts. They feed several hundred and they go under the bridges and they feed other homeless veterans. I love it. They all know where, they, where they're at. Wow. The hot other dog veterans. Carts, and were... they just serve them there and they wow. talk to them about their life and they bring them back to the Dream Center. And that's the most powerful aspect of this place as well is I think a lot of people just feel like their time is over. They're, they're, they're not useful anymore. Yeah. But in the kingdom of God, boy, I tell you, some, some get to the shore by the boat and it was a, it said in the word of God, and some get to the shore on broken pieces. And even mm. though you might be broken, you can be a piece that brings someone back to, to safety again. It's so good. And just this campus in general, the life, the joy, the word, the preaching, the discipleship, the growth, the colleges, all the things that's available to them. It's just a never ending stream of blessing. And most of the people that come through here are blown away. They're saying they never see veteran services like this. Yeah. Ever. And it's not a fly by night ministry. You know, the integrity, the longevity, the, you know, you have stars and movie stars and stuff come through every once in a while and, <laughs> and, and it's a big deal. And then the cameras go away, but the ministry yeah. just keeps on going. Yeah. The ministry just keeps happening in season, out of season, while other churches do whatever they're doing, this place keeps feeding the hungry, clothing the poor, reaching the hopeless, restoring broken hearts and lives. That's why we've been honored to sow, as a ministry, $10,000 a month for many, many years now, over eight years, at least probably longer than that. And then we've had special projects, special projects that we have been so honored to partner with you on and uh, such as the sex trafficking uh, staff, you know, and things like that, and then the emancipation building. But now this beautiful house will have 18 women veterans living in it, getting their life together, getting them off of the maybe addictions or, or problems in their life, and you and I can be a part of a massive miracle in our generation. I love veterans. There's something about Aww. men and women who serve our country that I, I really have a tender place for. And Pastor, I had kind of chills down my spine because this morning I, I walked the campus yeah. and I'm staying on campus right now because my house is going through some changes. So my whole family is huh. living on the floor. What about that? And the floor below me is the floor. What you guys give a month is what it really costs to run that whole program. We have 250 people in recovery. Mm. I hear the men doing Jesus chants Mm. every morning below us. That's what wakes us up in Praise the morning. God. That's um, beautiful. And then I see that, what you guys have done to make that happen. And I, and I just see it, and I see the emancipation. I walk Sometimes the we can get lost in ministry. We can, we can um, and, and it's always been an anchor for me, your dad, you, this place, and other ministries like you, but specifically this place, the Dream Center, that if I'll, if I'll keep, my focus back in the resources that God trusts us with, back, find ministries like this and pour into them and do what help them. They know how to do it. They just need resources. They need resources. Those men in your veterans program, how many are in there now? We have about close to about 40 men in the program right and now. And many of those men fought for our freedom. Yeah. Now that's not going to happen. It's happening. It's done. It's, a, it's an ongoing ministry. 
Have you seen miracles there in those men's lives? Oh, oh my goodness. The healing that's taken place has just I've been overwhelming. I've met many of them, by the way. And many of the guys through the program, they, they don't tend to stay long because yeah. they just need to get back on their feet again. Many, so many of them don't even know what's available to them. Um, they fall through the cracks, and so so you get them off of the street. They just get up and go, yeah. and you know, twenty percent homelessness has risen in L.A. Twenty percent. Wow. Hey, many people know about the national epidemic of homelessness. It's everywhere. It's in streets we've never seen before. It's in our backyard. They're setting up camps all over the city, and many of them are veterans who have been left behind. We sent them off into war to pay a great price, and they come home. And many times, all we have to offer them is nothing. Mm but we're gonna offer them something great. This is the most coveted place on campus, this house. This is the house that every ministry right? wants. It's a beautiful knew, garden outside that we're gonna do a God prayer and meditation me. garden. God was saving it for the people who have given the most, and now we're gonna pour back in the best of what we have for them. The suicide rate of veterans is alarming, isn't it? Oh, it's way beyond every statistic of national average. It's, and we see it all the time. And then uh, women as well. You yeah. think about a woman being homeless out yeah. here in L.A. Almost all of them are victims of rape. Things like this take place all the time. It's one thing to be a homeless male veteran. That's a bad thing in itself. Right. But for a woman on the street, almost all of them end up in this cycle of being molested and raped. And we see it all the time. And so then we'll have to deal with those issues when they come right. in. And those are issues that are so deep layered that only a miracle of God can really help get them through. And we see those happen. I love what you said to... Um about our veterans because it's not like they're, they're, they're programmed in their minds yeah. to, to, to do the mission, to yeah. get it done. Yeah. But sometimes life does things to people that they get so broken and so devastated that all they need is a, is a reprieve. All they need is an opportunity to get back on my feet again. Yeah. And boy, I hear the cry of the veterans, especially the veteran women, you and I are going to help them get on their feet again. Mm. And I'm asking everyone viewing this program, you know us. We, we do what we say we do. We, we believe in what we're doing passionately. And I believe in this ministry, the Dream Center in Los Angeles. It's been a tremendous honor to partner with them multiple times through the years. And here we go again. Don't have the money, but I know <laughs> God's voice. And he said, you partner with Matthew and the Dream Center. And I tell people, as they make the miracles happen for those, those veteran women, house them, clothe them, feed them, heal them, restore them, give them Jesus, most importantly. Yes, yes. And you do that brilliantly. Yes, yes. You pastor the church yes. here in Los Angeles and preach the love and compassion and grace of God. And it, it'll be a testimony, every one of those the, the 18, and then another 18, and then another 18. And I love it that it's one-on-one -on -one ministry. You know, it's sometimes we, we think mass, you can't do everything, but you can do something. You know, I, I feel like we were born for such a time as this. Of all the things we've done in 23 years at the Dream Center, I feel this is the most special thing we've ever done. It's wow. more dear to my heart, and that's saying a lot. We've done a that lot of big things. A lot. But with these women that they're coming to our doorstep, we've already taken in two, and they're so precious. They walk around, they thank me every right? single day, and um, we don't even have a place for them. We've already taken them in. Wait till this place opens up. I really believe it's going to shake they'll the foundations cooking, of They'll Boston. be cooking yeah. meals and eating. Well, the stove doesn't work. None yeah, of it. I know. We're going to redo all of this. <laughs> None of it works right now, but we'll, we'll get it going. And yeah. Make it a first-class operation. We but, got on the men's. But, we have but I, I can see it. I can hear the laughter again. I can yeah. see the smiles again. I can see the lives being restored, and just to have a tiny part, I'm going to have, I'm sewing into this. I know many of you have a soft spot in your heart for veterans. Many of you are veterans, and you, you would love to do nothing more than pick a, pick a brother, a sister up, a fellow warrior, and say, we're going to make a difference in your life. You know, yeah. that's somebody's daughter, that's somebody's granddaughter, yeah. that we're going to get to be uh, a, a small part of the miracle of God's grace in their life. Every morning they get up and they check um, the current events of what's going on and they adjust the flag altitude according to the half mass. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. And they get up and they go to the 15th floor looking over downtown in Hollywood and they mm. raise the flag in the morning or they, if it so needs to neat. come down, it comes down. 
And it's just such a precious wow. group of people on this campus. I tell people that, you know, recovery program took us a few years to kind of figure it out. This one just seems to work overnight. There's something mm. about them where they just, they just need to be woken again to purpose yeah. and vision and a, and a brand new start. Well, I know that your heart is touched today. And if you'd like to be a part of this miracle, we're saying now's the time. You're the one. This is the place. Yes. This is the moment. We can do this. We're going to do it. It's going to be done in a matter of months. And when we do it, we're going to come back. Oh. And we're going to have a celebration right here in this place. And you're going to meet some of those women veterans that were homeless and, and could not get their life back together. But because of God's grace and God's people, we're going to see this Freedom House. Women's Veterans Freedom House change lives on a daily basis, 24 hours a day. Don't you want to be a part of that? If you'd like to be a part of that, I'm asking many of you to pray about the greatest gift you can give. And it's going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. We've already told him to get construction going. We're good for it, which means you're good for it. And I'm asking you to really hear God on this. I'm not even going to tell you what to do on this program. I'm going to ask you to ask God what would he have you do? He said, my sheep know my voice. You can do your very best. I don't know what your best is, but I believe as you hear God's voice, he's going to bless these women. And in return, you will never see God not bless you when you make a, make a sacrificial gift and bless others. Let's pray. In closing, let's pray right now that God would move mightily in people's lives. And I'm going to ask you, Matthew, would you pray for veterans? And can we bless our nation and bless our country? And, and would you just pray right now for every person that God would speak to their heart concerning this great project, Freedom House, right here at the Dream Center? Lord, I just pray right now in the city of Hollywood, right outside our door, a city that promises dreams only to find that many people come here and their dream is broken. Mm. We look at the largest homeless population of veterans in America. It's right here in this city, God. And I just pray that you would resurrect a generation of women right now that are living on the street that maybe are just outside bathing right there in the middle of a skid row area or just trying to find whatever they can to survive one more night living in those tents, God, that will now have a bus that will pick them up and bring them here. I just thank you, Lord, for an army of people out there that are in their living rooms that love their country, that love these women, that love brokenhearted people, and that yes. love people that need a second chance for their ability to respond right now, Lord. And for 23 years, we've been serving the homeless, and we're going to do it for the rest of our life. We promise we'll give everything we have. And I thank you for those today that are giving everything that they have Amen. so that women will have a future. Their stories will be told for generations. And people who have given today will one day look back and say, we were part of restoring a population of people that were the most forgotten, women veterans that were homeless. We had a chance of making history, of turning the tide, of creating a place, one of the very few in the country, that will one day be a model for cities all over the country. But it takes a catalyst. That's right. It takes a starting point. In Jesus' name. May we be that today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Our time is almost gone. I want you to go to the phone, go to the website. I want you to sow the seed that God lays upon your heart. If you're going to give a special gift of $1,000, our announcer is going to tell you what we want to do back for you, or 500 or 50 whatever it is you can do. God is going to bless you for doing that. Remember what the Scripture said. The Scripture said that pure and undefiled religion is to take care of the orphans and the widows. It's pure and it's undefiled. This is what, this, <laughs> what we're doing right here. Amen. It's pure and undefiled. You know, the longer you live, the older you get, you want to make a difference. Yes. I want something to outlive me. And this house is going to outlive us. The ministry is going to change lives, veteran women's lives in remarkable ways. God bless you as you do it unto the least of these. Jesus said, you do it unto me. Thank you, and God bless you. God is calling us at Kingdom Connection to do everything possible to help heal what has broken. Sadly, thousands of American military veterans are living with deep wounds after years of service, often suffering with unspeakable pain and trauma. 
That is why we are partnering with the Dream Center to build the Freedom House Women's Veterans Home in the heart of Los Angeles. And that is why we are asking you to join hands with us today in this incredible outreach of compassion. Every gift makes a difference. When you make a gift today of $50 or more to help change the life of these precious veterans, we will send you Jensen Franklin's just-released book, Love Like You've Never Been Hurt. When you make a very special one-time gift of $1,000 or more, your name will be inscribed on the memorial wall at the Freedom House Women's Veterans Home as a lasting testimony of your love and generosity to these women who have already given so much. You will also receive a custom etched glass American flag for you to proudly display in your home or office. Don't wait. Go to JensenFranklin.tv to give your gift. Hope for these precious women begins with you. Well, this is Pastor Jensen Franklin. I'm so excited to be here at the tomb in Jerusalem. We're believing for you to have the greatest resurrection season as we enter into the Eastern, Easter season. I believe God's going to resurrect and do great things in our families, relationships, and lives. I invite you to join us at Free Chapel for Easter Sunday celebrations all weekend, multiple services at every campus. And I know God's going to do something real and powerful. It's a beautiful sign inside there that says, He is not here, He is risen. Every time you speak the name of Jesus, hell envisions two things, an empty tomb and an occupied throne. Jesus is alive and He's going to show Himself alive in your life. I'll see you at Free Chapel this Easter Sunday. Don't miss it. Bring a friend. Share a miracle. We have a lot going on this Easter at Free Chapel. Here's what you need to know. Join us Palm Sunday as we kick off our Easter celebrations. On Good Friday, we'll have a special 12 o'clock service for worship and a message by Pastor Jensen Franklin. On Saturday, March 31st, bring the whole family for an Easter festival. We'll have fun games, good food, and an Easter egg hunt. Then on Easter, join us for a sunrise service on the beach at Lake Lanier Islands, followed by Easter Sunday services at Free Chapel. Find more information at freechapel.org. This program has been sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. We hope you've enjoyed this teaching by Jensen Franklin and thank you for your continued support of this ministry.